Senior National Correspondent John Roberts is with the Trump team in Colorado, where the Republican nominee is campaigning today and continues to face questions about his taxes. Good evening, John. Good evening to you, Brett. Donald Trump on a swing of three western states trying to recover from what, for all intents and purposes, was a pretty rough week last week. Today in Pueblo, Colorado, making absolutely no apology for taking full advantage of the tax code as a businessman. It's my job to minimize the overall tax burden to the greatest extent possible, which allows me to reinvest in neighborhoods, in workers, and build amazing properties, which fuel tremendous growth in their communities. The Trump campaign is working hard to escape the controversy surrounding the unauthorized release of his partial tax returns from 1995. But Hillary Clinton herself is doing everything she can to keep Trump mired in it. Trump was taking from America with both hands and leaving the rest of us with the bill. At issue is a $916 million net operating loss Trump claimed in 1995 as a result of business failures. Under IRS rules, he could apply that loss against a combined 18 years of income, dramatically reducing his tax liability. The Clinton campaign insists Trump is gaming the system, but what he did appears perfectly legal. The net operating loss provision exists as an ordinary part of the tax code to smooth out uh, income over time for companies. You can imagine a startup company, for example, that for the first five years of their existence, they lose a lot of money, and then in the sixth year, they earn profits. But you still want a tax code that accounts for those losses in the first years of their existence. Depending on Trump's income in succeeding years, he could have used up the credit from the loss quickly, or as the New York Times suggested, without evidence, paid no income tax for nearly two decades. Trump has tried to turn the tables on Clinton today, hitting her on how she and Bill Clinton made their money after leaving the White House. Her only method of making money is by selling government favors and granting access to special interests, know nothing about how businesses succeed and grow. Hillary Clinton has never created a single job in her entire life. But at the same time, he found himself on defense over his Trump foundation. New York's Democratic Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, a Clinton supporter, ordered the foundation to stop fundraising because it lacked the requisite certification to solicit money from the public. In a statement, Trump spokeswoman Hope Hicks said, while we remain very concerned about the political motives behind A.G. Schneiderman's investigation, the Trump Foundation nevertheless intends to cooperate fully with the investigation. Earlier in the day, Trump tried to take advantage of the 14-point lead he enjoys over Hillary Clinton among veterans in a new Fox News poll, speaking to a veterans group in Virginia. But he ran into a storm of controversy when asked how, as president, he would address the issue of PTSD. When people come back from war and combat and they see things that uh, maybe a lot of the folks in this room have seen many times over and you're strong and you can handle it, but a lot of people can't handle it. Trump was ripped in both the media and on Twitter for appearing to suggest that strong people don't suffer PTSD. The Marine Staff Sergeant who asked him the question, Chad Robichaux, responded to that criticism late this afternoon saying, quote, it's sickening to me that anyone would twist Mr. Trump's words to me, uh, comments to me rather, uh, in order to satisfy a political agenda. Brett? John Roberts with the Trump campaign in Colorado. John, thank you.